Hello, and welcome to That Cannon Guy's Reviews. Today I'll be doing a complete overview, as you can see here, of all different manual focus lenses, adapters, and all that kind of good stuff for the Sony NEX system. And over there I have the Sony NEX, well the Sony Alpha NEX 5N, which is the camera I'll be showing you today with all these different lenses on it. And as you can see, we have a huge assortment of lenses to look at, so let's get started. Hey, so first up, I just want to say that one reason I bought the Sony NEX, this one, the 5N, is because of the huge, huge, huge selection of lenses available with all the manual focus glass out there. And I have not bought a single autofocus lens for the NEX. I'm sure I will sometime, but haven't yet. All I have is a slew of adapters, which I'll just show you those quickly here. I have only three actual NEX dedicated adapters. I have the ME to NEX, which is Minolta and MD. The photo, and these are all FOTGA, which is the best, I don't know, I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced, FOTGA digital adapter. But I have the EOS to NEX, the FD to NEX, and the MD to NEX. The reason I only have these three, these two are ones I could not get on my EOS Canon EOS 40D, which is the camera I had before my NEX, which I use these adapters on. But I did get, so the MD and the FD are the two that I couldn't get without, with Infinity Focus for Canon. So I have a whole bunch of adapters I used with my Canon though, so I just got EOS to NEX instead I get the whole slew of adapters for NEX. So I have the Nikon AI to EOS, the M42 to EOS, the Contax Yashica to EOS, and let's see, yeah, Pentax K mount to EOS, and I also have a few more Leica R to EOS, and uh, FD to EOS Macro, which I never really used. Oh, and also I have the Pentax 110 system to NEX, which is one of my favorites, and I'll show you why here. Okay, so let's look at a few of the lenses here, start off with some prime ones. I'll start with the widest one I have here. I have a, let's take off the adapter here, I have a Olympus... Wide extension and pro WCON. I think uh, it's rubbed off there a bit. I don't know exactly what that is. It's something B. And under that, I have a Vivitar 24mm f2.8 lens, which is my widest one and it seems to work very well for most wide angle stuff I need to do. I will get a wider lens here someday, but for right now, this is what I have. <laughs> One again, 18 millimeter, and this is an MD mount, so it mounts right on here. So you stick it on here, and the most useful feature of the NEX with these manual focus lenses is focus peaking. As you can see there, there is the focus peaking. See if I focus closer, see that, and then if I focus farther away, you can see that it's very precise. I like the focus peaking; it works really well. So that's the Vivitar 24mm f2.8. I found it has spectacular image quality and highly recommended for the NEX. Then another prime lens I have here, another MD, is the Minolta MD. Yeah, it's a Wilcor X HG MC W. Wilcor X HG 35mm f2.8. It forms a 50mm equivalent on the NEX camera. F2.8 is pretty fast. That also fits on the adapter. Found this one very sharp also. And it works very well for the NEX as well as the 24mm. Then I have, oh yeah, there's another wider angle one. A little bit of dust on it. Wipe that off. It's a Vivitar. This is a very lightweight lens. Not quite as high quality as the other ones, but it is pretty high quality. It's a lot less build quality. These last two here are very, very high on the build quality. And also these FOTGA adapters, these are solid metal and brass. My one complaint is, is how heavy they are. They're a little bit to the heavy side, but they definitely won't let the lens fall off your camera. <laughs> camera might fall off the lens, but the lens won't fall off the camera. Let's see here. Yeah, let's take that off. Okay, so then I have the Vivitar 28mm f2.8 wide angle, which is all plastic. Pretty cheap but it works. And let's see, it's an FD mount, Canon FD mount. It's F2.8, and if I get my FD adapter here, locks on there, and lock, and it sticks right on the NEX like this. Pour that one on, 
a 28 millimeter angle of view very nice and that one works very well also I like this one for walk around because it's very light and also a very wide angle lens so that's that and then let's see which other ones do I have here I have this is not one I personally use I just grabbed it out of our inventory to show you because this might be one that you'd be finding this one is a lot higher quality than most of the ones I have there's a couple here it's a Sai Optical Company SMC Pentax M 50mm f1.7 lens like I said this is extremely nice optically I just really don't need the quality as much as I want the portability which I'll show you this next lens it is not very heavy it's just not quite as light as this lens right here and also I found this one to be almost perfect optically it's an auto sears MC 50 millimeter f1.7 lens creamy focusing ring and f1.7 aperture which is very very wide open and bright there <laughs> see it through there and I fit this one with the Pentax K mount adapter and use this and just one thing with the manifocus focus lenses, you always have to make sure they say they don't have a haze or fungus because haze reduces contrast pretty drastically, isn't that great? And then fungus spreads to your other lenses and just ruins them. Totally, it's, it grows and spreads. It's like a mushroom inside your lens. You don't want that. And this one is very lightweight. It's the second lightest lens I actually own. Like I said, the adapter is almost as heavy as the lens itself, so it kind of defeats the purpose, but it still works just fine. And my one complaint with it is that it has a very, doesn't have a very good minimum focusing distance, 0 0.6 meters. This one, that's 0 0.45 meters on the other one there. But it's, this one's just a little bit heavier than this one. So. And this one's a lot cheaper. I picked this one up for $20, so pretty cheap. And this one is about I don't know, 60 to $100, a bit more. So that's that one. And then just a... Uh, I'll line up the 51.4s here. I have a few of them. Not all of them are mine. These two are not. I just wanted to show you a couple other ones besides my main one here. Which, my main one is a AIS Nikon Nikkor 50mm f1.4 in this cool black finish, which is a little bit rarer than the standard silver ones or just a different finish than this one. And this one is extremely solid. Perfect optics. Perfect optical quality. It's a f1.4 50mm. It's a bit on the heavy side compared to my 1.7 Sears one, and it costs quite a bit of money, but it is quite a lens. And there's a couple more options for people who don't quite have the same spending. <laughs> they don't can't spare 150 to 200 dollars for a good quality option. Here is a Canon lens FL 50 millimeter f1.4. So these can be had for as little as 30 dollars up to May 60 for a perfect one and they're very good optically I found not quite as good as the Nikon but very close and the newer versions like the new FD are just slightly better and then here's a very actually this one isn't a very cheap one but there's a couple other one, versions of this one that are pretty cheap this one's an auto Yashinan DS and this one goes for around 60 to 80 dollars but there's some versions of this made by different manufacturers that are the exact same optically they go for much less in the $40 range. And of course, if you think about the, let's see, the Canon EF version of the 50F 1.4 isn't quite as well built as any of these, and it goes for at least, I can't remember, $250, I think, a little bit more. So it's pretty expensive. Okay, so that's our 51.4s. And I'm pretty sure, nope, actually, we have one more prime lens here. So the Nikon Nikkor 105mm f2.5, very wide aperture for this focal length, it's a 2.5, and I really like it overall. Then we have a couple of special little tiny lenses here, and it's funny, out of the whole system here, the Pendax Auto 110 system, I have the biggest lens and the smallest lens. I hope to get the other one soon, but I don't have them yet. And one of them here is the Pentax 110 24mm f2.8 lens. And I've heard a lot about the little bit of quality loss of netting at the edges because this was meant for the 110 film format, roughly micro four thirds, which this is a any or this is a APS-C size image sensor. 
But if I stick this on here, which it has this really tiny little adapter, and this whole thing weighs less than an ounce. It's pretty amazing. It's the lightest lens you can get for your NEX, I think. I really don't see a lot of... I've taken a picture of, like, a chart with the stuff and looked at the focus, and it looks just as fine in the corners as anything else. There's no vignetting or vignetting or... I can't focus on that <laughs> from here. But it's a very, very handy little lens. This is my very favorite walk-around lens. And just one I got. I'm not using quite as much and don't like quite as much as the Pentax 110 Zoom 20 to 40 millimeter f2.8 lens. And these, all these lenses I'm showing you today are a very high instruction unless I otherwise mention it. And this one, it just mounts like this and it goes from 20 to 40 millimeters. That I have noticed at 20 millimeters, you will get a little bit of vignetting, netting, but if you go to around 22 millimeters, it's completely gone. And this is a pretty large lens when on this little mount, and especially when it's all zoomed in and focused, it's pretty large. But it's a very good walk around zoom lens. It's nice to have a small zoom lens. I'll show you equivalent. This is a 24 to 50, and look how big that is compared to this. <laughs> a lot bigger. And this one, I have a bit of difficulty getting it off. You have to kind of pinch your finger between the adapter and that. It comes off. It takes a 49 millimeter filter thread. This one, unfortunately, is dented. So, take a filter. And this lens alone just weighs like nothing. It's just like really tiny. So that's about it. Okay, so then for my zoom lenses, and actually I do have one more prime lens here. It's just a very large 500 millimeter T mount by Calamar. It's a Calamar 500 millimeter f8 lens. Use that one for super telephoto. Don't use it a lot in the NEX. It looks pretty ridiculous. So let's start with my wide angle zoom here. I have a Zycor. Which this one isn't particularly good, it's just cheap. Well, that's why I got it. It's really good at 24 millimeters, not so much at 50. That's what I found. And it's a Zycor MC Zoom, 24 to 50 millimeter, f3.3 to 4.5, pretty fast there. And zooms 24 to 50. And then it also has a macro feature, which is pretty nice. And it goes down to 1 to 3.8, so macro. And then it has a 67 millimeter filter thread, pretty large, a little bit of dust on there. You get a lot of dust here, so that's that. And this is reasonably heavy. I used to use that one more on my Canon EOS 40D. It worked pretty well in there. So let's see, what else do I have for zooms? Oh, yes, I have my new one I just got in. It is a Tokina ATX 35 millimeter f2.8 continuous aperture lens for the Canon FD mount. This is my favorite lens so far. After trying out for a while, I really like it. Only one thing I've found is that this little ring here that shows you where aperture thing, see it's gone loose, so you can't really accurately, because I'm not at f22, I'm at f2.8, so if I finger down, I can move that a little bit. It just moves around, it's very annoying, but other than that, this one works pretty well, and it's very high quality, it's all metal build, manual focus, 35 to 70, it's kind of like the Canon 24 to 70 millimeter extends at the wide end, which kind of strange. And then you have a very creamy, smooth focus ring, and it go. I don't know, it has maybe, it has 140 to 180 degrees of turn, so it's actually a very long throw focus ring, can FD mount, and I can just so show you what that looks like on my camera. on there. It's a bit heavy on this. Like I said, the grip on this thing is really good, though, so it counteracts it. And let's see. Do you want to 35? Yeah. Zoom into 70. Can't focus here. It's too close, but get the point on there. And that's one of my favorite lenses so far. I'm sure I'll get some more use of in the future and like it even more. And just one quick tip on the adapters for these. It's usually pretty hard to get lens caps for those adapters. The NEX ones cost a little bit, even generic ones. I found that Pentax K-mount ones work perfectly. They screw on, they screw it back off. Pentax K-mount. And the Pentax K-mount body caps surprisingly do not work with the NEX cameras, though I've tried that as a body cap. I've tried to put that on there, it just doesn't 
it doesn't screw on there right but they are good for pen dice came out lens caps are good for the NEX adapters if you don't have any NEX lens caps lying around if you like all this old manual focus stuff, you probably have some Pentax K mount stuff lying around. Okay, so I have two lenses in the same zoom range here. One's a lightweight, one's a heavy white. This one here is extremely light. The Phoenix manual focus 70 to 210 at 4.5 to 5.6 lens. If you're wondering, this little smudge on my lens here, it's actually a scratch. I'm using a Kodak EasyShare M580 to film this in 720p. Since my backup camera to my NEX 5N, the video quality. And also that is not that great. But it's a 70 to 210, like I said, 4.5 to 5.6. It's just very light, even though it's pretty slow. And it's also very inexpensive. I picked this one up for $15, I believe. Then, moving on here, here's my heavyweight. One of these, the Chiron. Which, Chiron is the higher-end version of Vivitar. Also, Vivitar Series 1 is pretty good, but their lenses are usually pretty good. 70 to 210 millimeter at 4, constant, macro. And this one, as you can see, is a beast. Lots of glass in there. And it's a Nikon AI mount. Let's see if I can open up to F4. Or there. It's a pretty large aperture. And one of my favorite features on this is zoom lock. It's, you can zoom any distance, then lock. Won't move. Then zoom to here, let's say. To 100 millimeter. Lock. Won't zoom in or out. And it's very useful that way. One little thing about this lens, if you have it zoomed to 70, won't fit, lens hood won't fit on there backwards if you want to store it. So, not nothing major, just a little thing on there. And the optical quality is spectacular on this lens. I've used it for lots and lots of photos on both this camera and my 40D, and it's always turned out spectacular results. Highly recommended if you're looking to get a 70 to 210 millimeter lens for either a Canon or any X or a Nikon. And don't care about the manual focus, first of all, but also, let's say something. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember it, but. But anyway, here we have a teleconverter, which I don't usually use teleconverters, but I have a couple here. This is one from Minolta. Here's a 3X from Minolta, so I have a 2 and 3X from Minolta. I have a 2x for my 500 millimeter back there, so it turns into a 1,000 millimeter f16. That's a telescope. I have some Canon autofocus extension tubes, which I'm going to try to switch these out for some non-autofocus. Now that I do not autofocus this, and then I have a set of Vivitar Minolta MD extension tubes with well with all my MD lenses. And then also, if you don't want to use extension tubes to get close, I have a set of close-up lenses here, which highly recommend they work very well for macro then I have a Sears 60 to 300 millimeter constant no it's an f4.0 to 5.6 so it's not can it's an f5.6 and I have a Sears teleconverter on the back of that so it makes it into a see it's 120 to 600 millimeter f8 to 11 some point four or something but it's a pretty long zoom then this one's just like kind of a beater lens, throw in the bag, whatever. Quantumary CN autofocus, 35 to 135 millimeter, 3.5 to 4.5. Autofocus does not work. It does work well like this, and it also has this nice, you get to 135 millimeter, you can focus down to 0 0.75 millimeters at 135 millimeter for macro. It's very nice for that. And like I said, the autofocus doesn't work, so I got this thing out of steel. <laughs> Pretty much got it for like 10 bucks or something. And that's about it for all my NEX lenses and everything. And possibly have... No. Okay, so thanks for watching. And if you like my videos, please hit the subscribe button above as well as the like button below. And watch my other videos. And also wait for upcoming more NEX series accessories and stuff. I'll have a feature on flashes and other accessories like that very shortly here. And, yes, thanks for watching.